This is Scott the fix a guy Today we have a GE dishwasher that isn't draining. So I am going to remove the air gap from the kitchen counter because I want to remove the dishwasher from the counter. So this is part of the removal process. I'm going to take off the cap, pull off this nut, and I'm going to push the whole thing down into the cabinet. I turned off the water. I'm going to use my pliers to undo the water line because I need to take that off. So I took the drain line off and the water line. I unplugged it. I'm pushing the air gap down underneath the counter so I can get to the, the drain hose clamp to loosen that, get the drain line off. I've determined that in this case, the dishwasher pump needs to be replaced. So I disconnected the dishwasher by taking out two Phillips head screws that were at the top that were holding it into the counter. And I'm gonna take out the lower basket. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull up on the little uh, drain cover, plastic cover, and I'm gonna take a turkey baster and I take out all the water that's in the drain sump. Because I wanna put the dishwasher on its side and I don't want a bunch of water to drain out on the floor. So I'm going to get that water out with the turkey baster, put it in a cup, and then when I put it on the side, it will drain a little bit, but not too bad. What I was getting in this instance was when I would ask it to drain by canceling the cycle, I could hear the drain motor humming, but it wasn't spinning the water. So I know that something is grabbing onto the impeller. So I'm pulling the unit out now. I'm going to put it on its side. i got to be careful I'm not going to pull on the drain hose or pull on any of the other hoses. And here's the new drain pump part number. It's a pretty common GE dishwasher. Here's the new pump up near the old one. <clears throat> Sometimes you don't even need a new pump, you just have to find out why the impeller can't spin. This is an older dishwasher, so I thought I'd re replace it. So I took the two power lines off the pump and the spin off the two hose clamps. Here's the one that takes the water away from the dishwasher, the drain hose. <clears throat> and now I can just lift the drain motor out of the assembly and I notice there's some stuff caught in it already, <clears throat> some kind of a wrapper. So I think this person maybe wasn't uh, rinsing their dishes very well. And I'm reaching in to the sump, I can feel there's some broken glass in there, pieces of uh, maybe a, a wine glass that broke. I'm going to get all that out. If you don't get that stuff out and then you put the new pump in, it'll just suck in <clears throat> the new things and cause the same kind of problem. So I'm using a little tool to fish out all the junk that's in the sump. All right, now it's time to add the new sump or the new drain pump in. So we push it into the sump assembly. And we'll tighten that up. This actually goes in really easily on this model. Put the drain hose back on. Tighten that up. So when I would press cancel, which is supposed to activate the pump, no water would move, but I could hear that thing humming. I reached in, I could feel the motor vibrating. So I knew something that's obstructing it. Put the power wires back on. We've got a brand new pump. I'll take apart the old one just for fun to see what's in there. So I'm going to remove the three Phillips head screws that hold the pump motor onto the housing. Then I found some stuff in there right away. There's a little um, 
know, like a rubber band or something wrapped around the impeller. So that's why it wasn't spinning. And this motor would probably be okay if I reinstalled it. It'd probably work fine. But it's an older one, so again, I decided to put a new motor on. They're pretty cheap. So we're just going to route everything back in. The water line, drain line, power cord back through the cabinet. And we'll push the machine back in, making sure we keep the soundproofing material being pushed in with, with the dishwasher as we push it back in the cabinet. So I got the drain line reinstalled. I got the nut back on there. Put the cap back on. Got the water line put back. Get that spun back in there. Get it plugged in and take it for a test drive. So I open it up and I press cancel, close it, and immediately I can hear the, drunk, the drain fire up and the water moving emptying into the sink. So everything's working great. So now I'm just going to reinstall the dishwasher into the cabinet by putting the two Phillips head screws in that hold it in. Tighten those up. And we're all done. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.